action comics. Uh, I can't even, most importantly for me, Deadpool. Uh, if you guys know who Deadpool and is me. and you love Deadpool, uh, it is because of this man. Everything that is cool about Deadpool is because of Joe Kelly, including Thank the you. fact that Deadpool is a character, that was his name, was never a reason why until Joe Kelly came up with not only a plausible reason, but a fantastic <laughs> reason. I did that as a question last night. I said, why is he called Deadpool? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sad thing is I probably wouldn't have known the answer I to that question. <laughs> He's, he, you've written so much since, yeah. I, I'm surprised if you forgot. You know, for me, it was that was like the first book that I really, Savage Dragon was the first book that I, I, I got. And then I went to Deadpool because I liked Dragon because it was funny. And I heard Deadpool was funny. But you took something that was funny and, and could have been vacuous. And you gave it meaning. You know, and for me, you know, Deadpool is a character and it's not really true anymore. He was always just so endearing because he knew he was an asshole. <laughs> and he didn't want to be one. Right. And every time he was an asshole, he was like, ah, oh, damn it, I did it again. You know, like, and you know, and it was like, ah, I killed another guy. I'll make this up somehow. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, and that was the ongoing, like, just spelling so royally. Yeah, completely <laughs> autobiographical. <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So uh, basically, what we do with uh, with I don't know shit about comics is, you know, uh, a, a while ago Jesse realized that, you know, we're, we we go to conventions all the time, and especially as writers, you know, you're sitting there, and if you're an artist, it's great because if somebody comes up and they don't know who you are, uh, you can draw them a little sketch, and they go away with a Batman, and they're like, wow, that was pretty great. And you know, as a writer, you can't go, well, I'll I'll write you a really exciting paragraph, <laughs> and a sonnet. You know, put this on your fridge I and enjoy it. <laughs> uh, so, and you know, one of the things that that. We're, we're all really passionate about is, you know, of course, comics and getting people interested. As I'm sure as comic fans, you guys want to share it with your friends and your family. Um, and we started thinking about ways to reach out, and, and Jesse came up with this great idea of doing this, this quiz, which uh, we actually did, uh, did here in Portland last year for the first time. And it's just a, a little general knowledge quiz of, you know, basic comic facts and misconceptions that we, that we wanted to cover because there's so many people that come to the conventions, you know, because they saw The Walking Dead on TV and they love it and they're like, hey, some of the actors are going to be signing, so let's, let's go down and check it out. And, you know, they're interested in the things that these properties were born from, but they don't quite know how to get into it. And, you know, maybe they even went into a comic book store and, you know, maybe they had a, a surly clerk that, you know, kind of brushed them off or, you know, or they just went in and they had, maybe they had a good person, but there was just so much there that they were overwhelmed. Yeah, I think people feel really overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know. And it's that, that's that thing where, like, somebody comes up to you and asks you a question and you're like, like, look it up. Like, you know, like, <laughs> you can figure that out. And you would think that people can make the jump to comics. But there's this invisible wall of, well, I've never done that before. Well, we'll just try it. You know, but most, I, I, think, I think the biggest problem with, with comics and getting people into comics tends to be the fans because we are so focused on the minutia. And if you're trying to get somebody into comic books and you're telling them all about the minutia, you are going to scare them away. <laughs> if, if, if they say, how do you read a comic? And you go, every comic's different. Every comic's different. I'm never going to read a comic. Yeah, this this <laughs> sounds like work. There's that a learning curve. hard. <laughs> you know, you need to say, oh, you just fucking read it. It's, there's words, and you, you do it, and it's easy, and go. <laughs> you know, like, Top to bottom, yeah, left to right. Yeah, read it. We've won, we've, you know, we've won the Pulitzer Prize. You know, we're, it's, it's not disputable. It's an art form, and it's a more, <laughs> a more versatile art form than any other art form that I know. So... You know, with, with comics, you know, you go, you go and you see, like, let's say you went and, you know, you saw the Avengers and you were like, wow, I really want to get into the Avengers. And then you come back to your comic book friend and you say, hey, how, you know, I, I want to start reading Avengers. Where do I go in? And they go, well, you know, you really want to get into, like, the 1970s run. But then again, you know, a lot of things were established in, uh, you know, in the early, uh, the early Stan Lee days that... Uh, never mind, you know, never mind. <laughs> that, that, that literally I'm just going to go read War and Peace, I guess. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I've been in comics now for, you know... 16, 17 years or something, and that exact thing happened to me when my son was like, I want to read Avengers comics. Now that he saw the movie, and I was like, I don't know what to give you. <laughs> and I looked, and I literally, I'm going online going like, what is the best run of Avengers to start with? And there's, of course, 5,000 different opinions, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, ah, screw you, go read a book. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what Mo else to tell Mostly, me. I would say for a modern audience, if you're looking to get into the Avengers, um, you either start with the new Avengers, um, or 
you start with Avengers Disassembled, which you'll be like, who the hell are all these people? But they all die, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that is actually kind of a fun. I always like, I like, just throw them in. You know, give them the, the crazy storyline and go. But, but yeah, the, the Bendis is, you know, Avengers is at least, you know, I, I find so much of the older Avengers thing, it's a, it's a much older uh, writing sensibility. And I think most modern people trying to get into comics go, I don't know, it, se it seems more like what they thought their grandparents' comics might have been like you know it's very verbose and you know everything's being described to you even you know infer I don't need to know that you know, like you know it's just every very talky and very you know you've it's funny because I went back and reread Deadpool recently and you used to write more like that and you've updated your style to be more of a modern comic book writer not everybody who was writing what you are has updated their science <laughs> <laughs> Fabian Nitches <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, he still I put a lot exactly of words. Like he did. Mm, yeah, I put a lot of words on a page, and uh, and at Comic Craft for a while, they would call me Joe Comic Kelly because I, I also did, had bad grammar, so it was bad enough that I had too many words. I didn't know how to put punctuation. But you, in but it. you adjusted. I mean, that yeah. was the style of the day, and you know, and and you've adjusted your style is way more modern now. He's also working on Ultimate Spider-Man, which I just started watching with my kids, and it's so awesome. You guys are doing oh. such a great job Thank on, you. on, on the fun. show. That is a fun show. Yeah, I, I first saw it in a bar. Uh, <laughs> at, at what Comic -Con. door do you go to? We go wrote to it in a bar. Yeah, <laughs> on cocktail napkins. Um, it, it was at Comic Con, and, and we went to one of the one of the parties, and and all, all the TVs they they had it playing, and you know you couldn't hear it over the thumping techno music, but <laughs> I, I was like going, wow, this this looks really good, you know, and it looks like I mean I can kind of put together the story just by what's going on, and and it seems fun and exciting, and so. Um, I oh started, I, yeah, I started. I started watching it, and I just absolutely love it. It's it's really fun. It's yeah. really the guys at Marvel were actually really cool about it. And Casada was like, um, you know, basically put together a cartoon, pretend that nobody knows anything about Spider-Man, but what you remember as a kid, like, and it, and it is taking the the feel of the old writing, the way that Stan would talk to you, the way that Stan would have Peter think about things, but then how do you visualize that? How do you put it in animation? You guys kind of did like it's almost it's like Teen Titans Spider Man, mm -hmm. you know it's it's got that you know snappy visual you know emotional like you just can get every joke it's they're just so yeah. sharp and right, and but mixed with that mighty Marvel marching society sort right, of right. stand <laughs> sensibility it's really a great balance it's a great show if you're not watching it you really should yeah <laughs> it's fun and there is a Deadpool episode which I'm, I'm yeah I haven't seen it yet like, I I, I saw a, like a preview of uh, like a, a clip. Of it somewhere, but I haven't watched it yet. It was one of the things I watched like the first five episodes or six so far. Yeah, like the Deadpool one was, you know, when you do the cartoons, uh, obviously for they're for kids and they're on Disney, and there's a lot of rules. You have to, you can't say certain things, and and kill and die are two of those things. Ah. But it was a Deadpool episode, and we were trying to figure out how to make that happen. And they actually fought for us to be able to have a sequence where Deadpool actually refuses to say that word. He's like, we're going to go unalive that guy. <laughs> I'm like, what are you unalive? <laughs> Like, you know, make him no longer with us, you know, this kind of thing. And then finally... It's so the dead parents' catch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he's going to join the choir of this yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man's finally like, you mean kill? And he's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so it was, uh, they fought for us, and we, we won that battle. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. No, so no, good. no, 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 <laughs> no, no. So look for the Deadpool Spidey episode. I got, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch that one now. I hope you had a heavy hand in the writing. <laughs> I did. That one I, I actually insisted on, and, and with a good friend of mine. So. Oh, cool. So, you know, basically, the, uh, the, you know, the overall idea that, that, you know, we've come to in, in having these panels and, and meeting fans and, and talking to them about, you know, what, what books they could read or where they could jump in is... You know, we have a list, uh, and you can find it. Is it still, uh, is it still up on yeah, the website? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, idksaboutcomics.com. Um, it's a really simple um, website. You know, it's just meant to be an easy resource. If you want some recommendations, um, we've got, like, two little, little setups. One, you know, if you enjoyed this film and you'd like to continue with these characters, here is the most reasonable place that I could find for you guys to jump on and hopefully have many more comics, like, ahead of it. You know, so that this is like, hey man, season one of a 50 series, you know, as much as I could give you, you know, the starting point, you know, if you start with Daredevil, Guardian Devil, you know, and even th the Fr Frank Miller stuff's worth going back to do later, but a more recent sensibility, it's written by Kevin Smith, and after the f first or second arc with, with Kevin, it goes over to um, uh, Mac, uh, David Mack. Yeah, I believe it is David. David Mack, Bob Gale, who wrote Back to the Future, he does an arc that's great. And um, and then after a minute, Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Mayleaf take over the book, and it is just the greatest 
daredevil thing ever until Mark Wade started writing recently. And that's what I'm, this is what I'm giving you. You're going to have 150 brilliant books to read. They're amazing. And I'm telling you, <laughs> Daredevil, the movie did not sell the concept. <laughs> <laughs> Daredevil's the one that, like, the comic fans know that's the book you want to read. It's always been for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a big one for me to recommend. But, you know, the, the website set up like that. So if there's a movie, here's a direct recommendation. And then we just have a few lists of, like, just some of the greatest graphic novels series that you could read. You know, Mouse, M-A-U-S. It won the Pulitzer Prize. They don't give that away for no reason. A comic book won the Pulitzer Prize. And it is the most brilliant comic book ever. Really worth reading. And there are so many more. There's so many genres. Everybody thinks it's all superheroes or Archie or anime. There is every genre under the sun. And it's usually being done better to certain degrees, you know, if you're finding the right stuff, than it's being done anywhere else. Because there's less cooks in the kitchen, and there's no budget constraints, and you can literally just do whatever you can imagine. And that's the beauty of comics, and that's what makes, for me, comics the single greatest entertainment medium that there is. And, uh, and, I, and I really don't, I will not entertain anybody telling me anything other than that, because anything I want to do I can do in a comic, and that's not true in any other medium. That just sounds so much more dramatic with your voice like that. It really <laughs> just... You know, I'm thinking about doing the whole Kogan thing. Hey, brother. <laughs> it's kind of, it's like, I keep hearing, I keep hearing myself. God, I sound like Hulk Hogan back in the day. No, it sounded like you were just like dying just now. It's like there yeah, must be for comics, comics please. <laughs> <laughs> And, and comics lived on. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Jesse <laughs> says comics are the greatest thing ever, and then he dies. <laughs> and maybe on people would actually start reading comics. The Braveheart Jeez. speech of comics. I'll do it. All right. <laughs> I'll be a martyr for comics. He died for our entertainment. Yeah, you know what the terrible thing is? Now that I'm like, this is my fucking, this is my job, I barely get to read any anymore. And it's so sad, you know, I, it's so hard for me to find the time, you know, to get some books. Aaron will bring me a stack of, like, stuff that he likes, and he's like, these are good, read these, and then I'll give them back to him slowly. But I barely get the, I used to read 150 individual issues of a comic per month. 150 per month. Um, the amount of ongoings, whatever. I mean, I was a gourmand. I wanted to know. You know, if somebody said this was worthwhile and this, you know, Sandman, and if it was a part of the comics, you know, culture, I wanted to be aware of it, you know, and I just, I binged, man. I just, I absorbed that stuff like you would not I believe. I did too. Uh, at one point when I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was behind on my pull box and uh, my dad says to me, he goes, well, let's go, you know, let's go down. I'll take care of it. You know, he's, he can be very magnanimous. Let's go have a father-son moment. I'll take you down to buy your comics. And, you know, my dad's a big sci-fi guy. Um, and sometimes he would read my comics, but, uh, you know, so we get, but he was not a regular Wednesday comic buyer. And, uh, so we get down to the shop and the guy pulls out my pull list for the month and he's like, uh, $225. <laughs> and my dad almost had a heart attack right there. <laughs> but to his credit, he bought them and then, uh, and very graciously did not, you know, just, just gave me a slight bit of ribbing about it, you know, and said, you're going to have to work this off. And then uh, when I got home, and about three hours later, when I had read all of those books, and I went back to him, and I said, ah, I'm bored. He was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I have a funny story about, like, the financial part of it. Because, I mean, 150 books a month is it's a habit. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, you know, it gets that crazy, because I was working at a comic store. So, you know, like... I got 30% off all my books. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, 150 comics a month. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't working for a comic book store. And it was 150 comics per month, plus an additional 30%. <laughs> so but I scoured the internet. And I found this website where if they would give you like 5% off, 10% off, and it was all based on how much you ordered. If you ordered 55 
monthly titles. They would do 35% off. And I was at 150, so I was like, 35% off? <laughs> and then I was working at Blockbuster getting free movies. <laughs> so it was all, all built around me being able to entertain myself with the stuff I loved. <laughs> So, you know, there's some defi definitely some great recommendations that we have for you, and, you know, we'd, we'd love to take some questions if you guys have any. Um, no, stu there's no stupid question. You know, anything that you've ever wanted to know, a recommendation, hey, I read this, where should I go next? Where should I start? There's no stupid question. So anything you guys would want to know. Yeah, and you don't even have to follow our recommendations. You can just grab a book and jump in. I mean, my, when I got into comics, there was, there was no real trade business. Um, the first comic that I remember getting hooked on, I mean, you know, I'd read Archie, and I'd read some Star Wars comics here and there, um, but somebody um, gave me a copy of uh, G.I. Joe number 16, which was uh, Night Attack. And I had some of the toys, so it was like, oh, I know who these characters are. And um, by the end of the issue, like, the main hero had been shot, uh, Cobra Commander had tried to betray Destro, the Baroness sacrificed, it was horribly burned. It was like just the most dramatic thing I had ever seen, you know, with these little toys that I had. And I was hooked, and I was at 7-Eleven every week until my uncle goes, oh, you like comics? Yeah, there's a book, uh, you know, a store that, uh, it was like a coin shop. And it was like, yeah, and they carry comics every week, and, and I was hooked. So you can jump in in the middle. You know, we've got good recommendations for I think your, your first book was what, Thing? Thing number, like, 17. Yeah. The Sphinx. And the, I didn't know who they were, but I, I liked the Thing. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, was your yeah for sure. I, I mean, I had a bunch of comics that I got from, like, uh, an uncle that was all this older stuff. And it was horror comics and war comics and Superman and a bunch of stuff. But the first comic I ever bought was a... Um, Bill Sin uh, it was Bill Sienkiewicz's cover of uh, New Mutants, and it was oh, a, yeah. the Demon Bear saga. And I didn't know anything about those characters. I knew nothing about, um, I mean, I barely knew the X-Men at that point. Oh, man, it was good. Because Sienkiewicz, you know, his art style was so trippy. And I'm, I'm looking at a comic book going, this doesn't look like anything I've ever read before. And that, that's one of the that's beautiful the, yeah, things about beautiful. comics. You know, like it's it, art. Yeah, and it's the same today as it was, when, you know, when I picked that up. There's an emotional... Um, uh, entrance into the way somebody else is theoretically viewing the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, you know, they're just trying to be good artists and they're trying to be good at what they do, but ultimately their style is formed by what they see. You know, and I, I had an art teacher, I, I was trying to be an artist when I was younger before I became a writer, and, uh, you know, she said, you know, just draw what you see, your mistakes will be, you know, your style. Mm. And, you know, and that's really true in, in comics, you know, you're drawing, you know, what you see and building on, you know, so much of the styles that have come before. But the styles of all these writers, some of them just, I mean, like somebody like Frank Quietly, who his art just really just, when you see it, you just go, this is just so interesting, so nice and so light and so pretty. And so when I look at Rob Liefeld's art, I'm seeing how he actually views the world. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> actually, I'm convinced of that. <laughs> Please. Please. So earlier you said that one of the great things about comics is that they're not budget constrained. So what would you say is a great example of something that has like big visuals that would be cost too much to make? Right now, I'm working on a creator-owned book called Odin and the Gods of Rock. And it's about religious figures as rock stars. <laughs> they are fighting in a battle of the bands in a coliseum on Asgard. Every religion represented gigantic, monstrous, Lucifer Antichrist is our Satan. Death Ferryman is our announcer. These things are special effects. Making it into a film or a television show would cost so much money. You have no idea. No, I couldn't possibly think of pitching it as anything other than a comic. And there's, yeah, there's definitely, you know, like, like one of the first ones that I thought of was uh, The Authority by Warren Ellis. Oh, yeah. um, at the time that that book oh. came out, they, they, the they space just station. huge set pieces of, you know, huge ship. You know, now with, with CG, you can achieve some of that for $200 million. But, you know, comics work on a $200 million budget every month. You know, Without just, now that doesn't that mean anybody money. gets paid anywhere near that or that they <laughs> cost anywhere near that because trust me, that's not happening. But, uh, you know, the, just the amount of detail that an artist can put in really, there's no limit to it. You know, the only limit is the artist and the writer's imagination and what they can come up with. Do you have a, what's the most expensive scene you've ever written into a comic where you went, wow, this would be expensive to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I mean, that, the fight with the elite, 
uh, and yeah, the Superman thing is probably a the pretty elite crazy fight one. is definitely up there. I mean, we, you know, they break the moon basically, and, the, and yeah, there, yeah. there's stuff and going on. And they animated there. it recently, but that cost way more money than doing a comic book. Yeah, there. Uh, I wish I had a, a, I'm trying to think of one that, that really represents, like, they, but they're all epic to me. I mean, that's what's so cool about most of the stories we tell. And, and on the, the other side of it, I mean, you can obviously find stories that are very small and personal. But whether you like fantasy or sci-fi, or it doesn't matter. Like, the biggest things you can imagine wind up on that page. So, uh, I don't know, none of them kind of, I mean, we had, we had a Superman story where three planets ended up showing up in the solar system. I mean, you had, like, War World and... Uh, it wasn't Bizarro Planet, but I don't even remember on Earth. Yeah, it was like all these planets and all this stuff blowing up, and it was, uh, yeah, you can't do that. So no, could, since, since we brought it up, can I, can I just thank you for Superman versus the Elite? Um, I <laughs> absolutely, uh, it, if you guys haven't, they've made, they've made a, a cartoon of it now that you guys can, I think it's still on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's Superman versus it's the Elite. Came but it came, you, you put that out at a time when everybody was saying, Superman's boring, you can't make Superman interesting, he's too much of a Boy Scout, and you really found a way to kind of not change who the character was, but just show a different side of him and reflected in the villain, Manchester Black, which, oh, you know, you basically took everything that fans were saying about Superman and said, okay, well, I'm going to turn it into this character. No, thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, that's, that's one of the cool things, too. Again, if uh, you know, talk about when you can jump into a character or when you want to jump into comics. Uh, you know, these co the characters have been around for a long time. New artists, new writers take them over every couple of years. So you can find an era or you can find a team that sort of might be interesting to you, even if the one right before it was not your cup of tea. You know, you can always find a Superman story that suits you, you know. And for me, that it was very important. Actually, when I first got hired on Superman, he wasn't really a favorite character of mine. But by the time I wrote him for three years, oh, now I, I love that that whole run before you guys on that book all the way through. I mean, you know, there was certainly the the best one, the next best one, and the next best one, and the next best one. But I liked them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. Uh, um, hi. 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 What, what? Tell us what your name is. Aaron. There's also a mic over there, just so you know for the future. Oh. Uh, I, I'll, I'll let them go first. He's uh, new. Oh, they, they they go first. What a gentleman. <laughs> Please, go ahead. Uh, one of the things that I've always struggled with in uh, the comics and trying to get into the comics is, you know, I grew up with reading books and just reading books and you have this really nice big book and you can, you know, spend a week on it, you can spend a day on it if it's good enough, um, spend a month on it. And you get the whole story in one book. And then my friend tried to get me into it at one point in time, and it was just this little paper thin <laughs> thing. And I'm like, well, okay, that's, that's like a chapter. Uh, where's the rest of it? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, no, you have to wait. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let, 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 let me stop you there. <laughs> no, this is modern day, and the wonderful thing about comics is that we've been doing this for years. I mean. I'm a young guy. I've been in the business for 15 years. You know, in 15 years, do you know how many comics have been published? Do you know how many amazing comics have been published? You wouldn't believe me if I tried to tell you. Just brilliant things. And they're all out there, fully collected. And you could get them tomorrow off the internet on your iPad. And your iPad wouldn't weigh any more than it did a minute before you downloaded it. <laughs> so so that's, my, that's kind of my, my question to you is because... Um, I've tried to then, you know, try to do the, the big comic books, but those even going to half price books are get really expensive. Um, so is there something, because uh, they, you know, obviously Kindle, they have the apps that you can, you know, download your books and it's only a fraction of the price. Well, I know there are certain websites that'll do that with comics. So Com are there ones that you recommend or is there something that would give you a good feel? Um, yeah, um, well, Comixology is uh, is probably the best uh, site out there now for uh, at the, you moment, know, the digital at space at the moment. Um, you know that that may change. You know, th there's always you know new things coming along, but Comixology is pretty much um, at the current time tied up uh, deals with the, all the major publishers. So, and I know a lot of times they, I, you know, I get email updates from all, them all the time saying, "Oh, this is on sale. This is on sale. This is on sale." Um, so th that's a really good way to do it, you know, and to have a digital library that you can go back to. You know what? Know. There's one even more economical thing. Our friend uh, Mark Wade uh, just started a digital comics website um, called Thrillbent, and I believe everything everything on there is free. Every, yeah, everything on that. I'm all actually going to be releasing a, He's got a, a, decent a musical album through Thrillbent, all for free, you know, and so it's all short, you know, digital comics and 
go, you know, I mean, especially anything that Mark touches. Yeah, read for sure. And then the other, you know, uh, to go really old school is the library. I mean, like literally, libraries have finally caught on <laughs> to having a graphic novel section, and um, you get some really good stuff. And they have they have a nice range very often, especially if, if somebody's curating well. You'll get the mainstream stuff. They'll make sure that they've got Walking Dead or Avengers or something that's current. And, and they'll, they'll have, have mouse. mouse. And they'll have mouse. Mouse is worth reading. You know, or they'll have, uh, you know, I have a book called Eichel Giants. Like, they'll have something like that that's more of a, like, young adult, you know, kind of thing. Like, they really will have the whole gamut there. And um, that way you can get it, and then it costs nothing, so. Okay. And then, you know, a third option is make friends with an obsessive compulsive like me. <laughs> and, uh, and then just come over and avail yourself to that's the what library I that I've collected. <laughs> I don't I buy too. comics anymore. I just get them from him. Yeah, I did that too. I, I couldn't afford comics in college. And I had a buddy with every graphic novel. And I was just like, okay, thank you. Yeah. And that was it. See, I don't feel bad because my brother was mooching off of me for like six <laughs> years. So he finished mooching. Now I'm mooching off of Aaron. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Okay, and as for my name, my name is Gogglehead, the modern steampunk American. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you read Steampunk by Joe? No. I, I, I've been waiting to ask you, because I see steampunk is huge in the cosplay world, and you, had, you guys were doing steampunk on Cliffhanger for, what, you did like three years of that? I got to admit, so much of it went over my head, but I loved you guys, so I just kept reading, going, I don't understand, but, <laughs> but it looks nice. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah I, I loved steampunk, and I would like it if, instead of it being like, oh, it's Victorian and England steampunk, where's our American steampunk? <laughs> Joe well, Kelly and Chris, how do you pr pronounce I mean, Chris's like, last name? But, but, but where's our cheeseburger? Bacallo. That's what we need. Bacallo. Bacallo. But anyway. Bacallo. Oh, okay. it's really, if you like steampunk, it's a really cool book. It looks okay. great. Okay, but anyway, for my question. Um, you know how, like, originally when, like, Captain America first came out and the other Avengers didn't exist, no one really, like, from what I heard, no one really thought that there were going to be all these other amazing superheroes that they came up with and turn into a super new team of superheroes. But I've noticed lately that there haven't really been in, like, they turned old superheroes like Spider-Man and the Hulk into TV shows and video games and all that kind of stuff all the time. But wh where's our new superheroes? Like, like Oh, they like, exist. But, you just don't know about them because you haven't started looking. But, but like, you have to look for the things that you want to find. I, if you just look at what is given to you, you will never see anything new or <laughs> unique. You will only see what is being presented to you. But you have to... You have to look. Now he sounds like Yoda. There's tons. <laughs> J Joe Kelly has a number of new, like, not, and, and not all of them are necessarily superhero type, you know, comics or whatever, but well, I Kill Giant, what, Top, Top Dog is, what, was one of them. Well, Bad Dog's bad definitely dog. not a superhero. Yeah, well, I, well, I, you know, I didn't do, I didn't read Bad, I didn't read bad Dog, I read, I read I Kill Giants. So uh, I think you have, you have something specific in mind. What, uh, what, what, like, uh, what I mean is, is like, I was thinking that. Where are the corporate new superheroes? Kind of like where are the new superheroes that his are gonna name, have like a new super team? And his new name fancy is Gravity. His name is Gravity. They've killed him a couple times, but they keep bringing him back. The Runaways, um, you know, they just did a book called Academy X, uh, um, no, Avengers Academy. Mm -hmm. That's all younger, newer characters. I mean, but you're talking about corporate reinvention. Yeah. Like the new, new, brand well, the new, the new, new is really just the old, but a little different. Well, you've kind of got to go new, independent. New, you got to go outside yeah. of the Marvel universe, the DC universe. If you really want new, you need stuff that is not directly impacted by every event that goes on every two seconds. So you like, need something that's by itself that can be good on its own. Okay, and can I buy one of your water bottles for tortoise? <laughs> uh, you know, just to follow up on that too, the places that you've got to look, you know, Marvel and DC are always going to be big, established, legacy characters. Sorry that you missed it, but... Um, Image... I don't need the quarters. Image is creator-owned stuff, new characters, a lot of all-ages stuff. Um, yeah, Image. Look online. There's a ton of really good web comics that are new superheroes. Now, it, you know, if they last long enough, they will become the new teens. You know, that's the other thing, is if people support them and people go for them. Marvel and DC have massive engines behind them that can keep those things going, which is awesome. But when you want to find those new characters, you know, like Jesse said, you got to look elsewhere. And, and literally, if you go out on that floor, there's comics you just have to kind of take a chance on and just go like, well, I'll try this one. It's two bucks. We'll see what happens. And if it's great, you buy the next one. You know, and if it's not great, you move on because there's somebody, I mean, there's, I don't know, 100 some odd creators in there coming up with new stuff all the time. So that's where you got to look. 
on the back end of when I was reading like a lot, um, my favorite new character to you know be introduced um, was uh, Ares. Uh, Michael Levon Oving wrote this amazing miniseries about Ares, and I just like loved that character. And of course, I was really shocked when he was ripped in half <laughs> six months later. And I'm like, what? You just made a new one, and he's really good, and now he's dead. Yeah, I got really invested in that character. I, you called me. I called you. He actually called like, me on, on Comic Day Wednesday. And he goes, Dude, have you read Siege? And I was like, I just finished it. And he's like, they ripped Ares in half. And I was like, I know. I just, it blew my mind. I, I, I was seriously, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so far he hasn't come back. I was on the back. train. I was on the train. And I like yelled. Everybody was like, who is this guy? I'm reading a comic. I'm yelling. <laughs> I may have had tears no. in my eyes. Hi, I just... Hi, what's your name? My name's Kiana. Um, yeah, Kiana. I just wanted to say uh, Deadpool is really why I got into comics. I started reading that, and so I just wanted to tell you that you're like oh, thank kind you. of my hero. And so. Yay, thank you. <laughs> where, where did you start with your Deadpool reading? Oh. Because it's so hard to get a hold of, of your run. I, yeah, is like, your run in... Repr is it in yeah, trades they, they, right now? They're Deadpool classic, which of course makes you feel really old. <laughs> But um, they're, they're putting out a... There shouldn't be a Deadpool class. Yeah. <laughs> Deadpool oldies. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. the, uh, but they, believe it or not, they're putting out like an omnibus, which I, you know, is one of those things that's very cool that they're doing, but it's a really expensive book. I don't, I don't really recommend like as a person to go track that. I mean, it's like a $125 book. Well, but it's well a, I'll buy it just so I could finally read the Daredevil Deadpool annual, the only issue of the whole run of them. Oh, yeah, that's Never America. found it. Never yeah, found it's, it. It's literally story. everything that I ever did is yeah, in there. Because they didn't reprint any of that stuff, so any issue I missed, I had, and I hate it. I hate having to go through stupid long thoughts and looking for one darn issue. Like you said, <laughs> this thin. I just want. <laughs> like, I, but thank you very much. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so I love Deadpool and I love Hack Slash, and I really like Hey, Tim was really sorry. He got double booked. Mm -hmm. um, he was booked at the Dark Horse panel at the same time. He just came over to me and went, Jess, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, so sorry Tim couldn't be here. Yeah, and I, I love Spider Man and that sort of humor, and I was wondering if I wanted to get more into that style, where would I, what would I look into to find a comic like that? Like Spider Man or like, a good place like for Spider Man? Spider -Man. Or, like, it's the. The dark, snarky humor. That uh, one, one that I'll recommend right now that's, that you, uh, is still, I think, maybe four to five issues in, that, you know, it, so it's really easy to catch up on the run, is uh, Nick Spencer is doing a book called Superior Foes of Spider-Man, oh. and it follows Boomerang and uh, Speed Demon and the new Beetle and like a couple of, uh, couple of other like, perennial loser villains and kind of their little group, and so far it has been a lot of fun. And it's, it's nice to see a book that's not told from the hero's perspective. It's told from the schlub villain mm -hmm. that's just trying to get by, you know, it's like he's got to go meet with his parole officer. It, it's really a fun book. So if you, like, if you like a lot of snarky humor, and I think like right now the, the idea is that uh, they're supposed to go find Silvermane's head. And if you're familiar with Spider-Man history, Silvermane's a mobster that was in a cybernetic body, and then he got killed, but now there's He's like a, a legend that his head's still point. alive, you know? And so they've been hired to go find his head. We're showing our crime family. <laughs> you know, so that, that's one that I recommend, like, right off the top of my head. Are you guys reading any? Well, you're, well you my, just read what I read. One, I wa well, I want to say Brand New Day. And Joe Kelly was a part of that. Some great, great, great stuff. I mean, when you get to the Rhino issue, you'll be, like, losing your mind. Um, <laughs> It's all really good, and it, it was, they were doing it weekly. Or, 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 not yeah. weekly, three issues yeah, a month? Was, yeah, I think three so, yeah, issues Yeah, it was like three month. issues a month for at least like three years, I guess. So they had a, a long run, and you just pick up the brand new day, like, and it's all, there's a whole bunch of trade paperbacks, and they're all numbered, and it'll go on for a while. And it's a lot of really great stuff, and it's all this great world building because you know, they had a real long game plan set up for the whole you know, the, the whole story. So you really can see the long game that they're going towards, and it ends really, I think, pretty satisfying, um, especially because it continues into Dan Slott's run, um, mm -hmm. which is going on now still, which is really enjoyable as well. So if you start there and enjoy that, you're gonna have a long time of reading Spider-Man. Yeah. It's really And like, Dan's, a, Dan's a really funny writer. I mean, oh, he's right, Dan yeah. is really, really funny. His She-Hulk run and his Thing run, which I don't think they collected the Thing, yeah, but yeah, yeah. They, uh, th there's definitely some collections of the She-Hulk run that he did, which is awesome. She's a green, super strong lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Also check out uh, Astonishing X-Men uh, if you like if you like humor because that book had a lot of humor in it. It was written by um, a really yeah little known writer named Joss Whedon. 
Um, I've got I've got some love in my heart for him. <laughs> and also, if you have not read Astonishing, he's Astonishing. obscure. It'll be hard to find, but it's out yeah. there. <laughs> if you haven't checked it out yet, um, uh, Brian Vaughn's Saga. You read Ooh, that yet? Ooh, I love Saga. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, the humor. The, I think there's a, a level of humor in that as well as the fantasy and the. I mean, you talk about a, a thing you could never make a movie of. Yeah, I mean, high that's concept. the crazy high concept budget nonsense. But it's, maybe um, you could, but it would cost millions. Yeah. And millions no, you'd of have dollars. to do like an HBO yeah. Game of Thrones budget right. show. See, to, but that's the thing right there. You said, "Oh, I love Saga." <laughs> well, then you have the answer to all your questions. <laughs> you love Brian K. Vaughn, yeah. <laughs> and you need to seek out more Brian K. Vaughn books, and there are a lot of great ones yeah. from Runaways and. Uh, 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 do, uh, do, I always get nervous to say do X machine. Do, is it do oh, X machine? Deus Ex. I, don't, I ex, never bother to learn how to pronounce it. <laughs> As a comic um, geek, you, you read a lot of words and you think you know the way they're pronounced. That you've, you have a lot of words that you've never heard anyone say. It's another great thing about I our media. You'll have I a vocabulary. Can't say it. You just won't necessarily know how to pronounce it. I know how to spell it. <laughs> You'll know what it means. You'll know well, what it is. What was the other? Uh, there's a whole, a whole bunch of mo other good what, great Brian's book. One, he wrote a like, Pride of Baghdad, which I'm is a one-shot graphic Just novel. Look him up. Okay. Yeah. Find out everything he's written and start reading all those books. That's how I did it. I loved Eric Larson. You know, I love Joe Kelly. I started reading Uncanny X-Men because I saw Joe Kelly was writing Uncanny X-Men. So then all of a sudden, I was reading the X-Men. You know, I started reading Superman because I saw Joe Kelly was writing Superman. And I followed the people I liked. I'll you pay know? you later. I'm yeah, no, I appreciate no, no. the endorsement. Joe, Joe it's, it's so cool to call Joe a friend. You know, he's one of, one of my idols, one of the people that I'm, I'm in the business because of. But it's people like when Joe. When Joe was in the middle point of his career <laughs> and I was a little tiny baby. Yeah. <laughs> but it was Joe and Garth Ennis and Greg Rucka or whoever it was that I responded to something they did. And all I had to do was hear. You know, I wouldn't pay attention to reviews. I'd hear that this book was good. I'd give it a chance. If I thought it was good, I said, this guy can write. And I would follow them to something else. And boy, did I discover some great stuff that yeah. way. Garth, and very rarely disappointed. Yeah, Garth is another. If you don't read Garth, Garth Ennis is uh, swing, the pendulum swings between really funny and really dark and <laughs> deadly and raunchy, but it, it, it's always somewhere in between. Preacher. I love every, yeah, preacher. Read preacher. Yeah, but it's very dark, though. Hysterical. So yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go over to this. Uh, Jesse, do you want some hot tea for your throat? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was an easy question. <laughs> that Very is the briefest answer we'll do today. <laughs> yes, sir. Tell us, tell us your name and, and give us My your My name is Nick. Uh, just real quick, though, on the Astonishing X-Men, I just found two copies of that downstairs in one of the 25-cent bins, so there is a chance to even find some here. Check it out. I just read number seven, and it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great book. Beautiful, too. John Cassidy's a great artist. Oh, yeah. Uh, but actually, I got to meet the two of you at Wizard World last February, and I will say, you guys both suggested to me Mouse, and Jesse, my girlfriend, actually told you about this last night. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes! Yes! This is a great story. <laughs> she, says, she says you're a mouse aficionado now. <laughs> we went out uh, the day after the con and got the first book, and within eight hours, I had finished it. It, it is a fantastic book. Brilliant. Jesse is underselling it, and even if he had his voice and was jumping up and down on the couch like Tom Cruise. Like I usually do. <laughs> yeah, I am kind of surprised to actually see you sitting in a chair the correct way. I love Katie Ho. I've wanted to do that the whole weekend. It was the tea. The tea just said. But now it's my paddle, so I can. <laughs> but it, Mouse was such a great read that I, I was wondering, is there anything else along the same lines? Maybe a historical base? Uh, That's tough company. Wow. Um... Road to Perdition, which I have not read myself. I love the movie, and I've been meaning to read it. Um, it's supposed to be really excellent. Um, and, you know, if, and, you know, I don't believe it's historical in any way, shape, or form, but it is it's uh, a period, period piece. piece yeah. A really well-done period and, piece. And even period pieces are great. Uh, it, also, just kind of that same writing style where it's almost <gasps> like that torso. How I Met Your Mother. Torso. Torso. Read torso. torso. Brian Michael Bendis, Mark Andreco. It's based on Elliot Ness solving the first serial killer in the history of the United States. Yeah. And it's based based on the real, I'm real history. I'm smiling. Just Dude, it's awesome. Book. It's black and white. It's really good. It's, it's a thick one. But I read that one in like a short sitting. I was blown away by it. You know, and Draco too. So I was like, dude, Torso is awesome. It's a great and book. The, you know, if you like period stuff and maybe you're willing to try something a little out of the box, um, Lone Wolf and Cub, if you haven't read that series. I it's a not. samurai series. It's, it's old. I mean, it's been around for a long time. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's... <laughs> It's beautiful and it's really long. I mean, it, I think there's like 35 volumes of it or something like that. But it's um, <clears throat> it's the guy who was the uh, head executioner for the emperor, 
um, something goes down, he ends up having to lose his position, so he becomes a ronin, and it's him with literally his baby, and taking this path to revenge. And it's, a, it's an incredible epic. Like, you really, you get through 35 volumes of this thing, and it's kind of mind-blowing. But um, th those guys are sort of masters. And, and it doesn't look like, um, you know, if you sort of have a preconception about, like, what manga looks like, it's not at all. It's a very, like, uh, highly detailed, highly oh, rendered yeah. book. Really beautiful stuff. It is a very beautiful book, yeah. He's underselling it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, Let's go back over here. Oh wait, one more. Is it there? Did Spiegelman do a, not like a sequel to Mouse, but like he did do a follow-up. It, it was a follow-up something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Did you read the second one? Oh, see, I haven't, I haven't read the second one. I, I should. Well, see, look I'm at, totally going to read Now it you're now. coming back and you're educating us. You're schooling us. Look That's at that. awesome. I, I have become the student. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, have you ever read um, Empowered by um, Adam Warren? I have read Empowered. It's been a while. Um, uh, what do you think about it? I, I, uh, I really like, I, like I said, it's been a while, so oh, I don't, it doesn't, stand, I, it doesn't stand out clear enough for me. To, I, I think I enjoyed it. I, I tend to enjoy Adam's stuff. Um, he has a really, uh, a really fun style that I really like. Um, so I, I, think I, I, I think I enjoyed it, but like I said, I, I, it's been a long time since I read it, so I don't, I can't recall anything specific. I haven't, re <laughs> I haven't read it, but one of my good friends at Marvel, who was an editor over there, he hired um, Warren because he loved that book. So he actually brought him in. I forget what he did. He, there was like an Ant-Man miniseries. Or like, it was like some obscure... I was going to say, the name is familiar, but I don't, quasi, I don't know. Quasi, like anime-ish, sort of, you know... Yeah, his style's very, anim yeah, very anime-influenced, anime, yeah. but, like, but like really beautifully yeah. My, you know, my beautifully buddy, done. like, loves, worships that book. He loves that book. He did a Gen 13 miniseries, like little miniseries. Yeah, that's right, the Gen yeah. 13 I absolutely one. love. Yeah, I think I saw... I think I read that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but not all of us have read that one. Sorry? <laughs> There's a lot of books. <laughs> yes, what's your, what's your name? What's your question? My name's Susan. Hi, Susan. And I have a niece who is 11 and really, really, really wants Ultimate to Ultimate Spider-Man. The thing is, she is so afraid of blood and Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man. Well, well, I mean, so there's a little she, bit of violence if you don't want yeah. any violence whatsoever. Yeah. It's comic book violence. Okay. It's, it's meant to be a ground floor book for kids. It's a slow burn book. Brian Michael Bendis is still <laughs> writing it. Um, um, is no. she interested in all at the, at, at, in the uh, My Little Pony books that IDW is doing? So I went into my local Adventure comic time. shop and was asking, and they were, well, she wants superheroes. And she oh, okay. was like, oh, that's and I went into my comic book shop, and they were like, uh, the pony book's in Adventure Time. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Ultimate no, well, Spider-Man. Are there any with female leads? Astonishing no. X-Men. Astonishing X-Men. Astonishing X-Men has Kitty Pride and a really good, okay. positive, uh, you know, female female role model, and then White Queen to offset that positivity. I, <laughs> sure. I would also definitely recommend uh, uh, Tiny Titans is fun. Tiny okay. Titans is great. Uh, that one's real simple. That one's like yeah. I read that to my five, six-year-old. Yeah, I might be. Too, I don't know if it's too young. Um, the G-Man series, even though it's not a female lead, uh, but G-Man is great. It's Chris G. Russo. Um, Boned. Oh, Bone oh, is Bone very is cool. Bone's yeah. a great one. Yeah, Bone is really cool. Um, I'm trying to think of another. I know, because my, my son's been looking at stuff. There's a, our comic shop is a really awesome. Like, when you first walk in, it's all kids stuff, which awesome. a lot of comic shops don't have. Mm -hmm. no. It's, you know, hidden. and. Uh, you know, there's a good one. Um, there's at least probably like 10 graphic novels of Jeff John's Tiny Titans run. Uh, not Tiny Titans, Teen Titans run. Um, you know, it's Beast Boy, Super, you know, all the characters from the Teen Titans Go, plus Superboy, uh, Wonder Girl, who's the main, main cat, all the big marquee sidekicks. And it's not super bloody or crazy. Kid, kid Although if you keep going past Jeff Johns, Ron, it does yeah, get a little say, bit Yeah, I, I would okay. make sure you read, once you get past Jeff Johns, Ron, make sure you read yeah, it first to determine Jeff whether John's it's appropriate. Run, it gets a little stupid. <laughs> Yeah, some of them get kind of dark. <laughs> yeah. um, but there, there are definitely new comics out, too. Um, a friend of mine has a book called uh, Rocket Queen and the, and the Wrench. It's an online book. 
uh, uh, web comic. It's very cool. Rock, rock Scary queens. Scary Godmother. Scary Godmother. By Jill Spider. Thompson. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's great, Jill. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Sure. Hi, Hi. My name is Bianca. Hi, Bianca. And I've been a big video game nerd pretty much my whole life, and I just recently got into comics through my favorite video game, Mass Effect. They started doing Dark comics. Um, right, yeah, Dark, Dark Horse does some yeah, great stuff. Yeah, they were awesome, and so now I'm like, okay, I really want to get into more comics, but I guess the biggest issue I've had with comics is most of the females tend to be very... Um, <laughs> anatomically <laughs> uh, crazy proportion and basically wearing lingerie as their like outfit. No, uh, I can't defend the lingerie, but Don't as far, read as, far as, the, uh, by Ed as far as the or Eric Larson. <laughs> as far as the physiques go, um I, I don't you know, I don't have Superman's physique. So, right. You well, know, everybody's idealized. But yeah, no, I understand what you're yeah. saying, especially when it comes to the costuming. Right. And and the posing, it's like it's always their ass to the you know, Have you seen the website where the artists are drawing? The yeah, I saw that where it was all the males <laughs> pose. Hey, like the that. males like are they pose the females. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, we're, uh, so, we're we're objectified too. <laughs> so I guess my question is: Are there any comic books that you know of that have a female lead that aren't? drawn so again I would say mm -hmm. Astonishing X-Men is a good okay. place to start uh, not only do saga. you get yes yeah, Saga is saga. another great one uh, that's drawn by Fiona Staples mm -hmm. um, one of the, uh, you know it's interesting that you said one of the s comics that I re it's uh, an old comic but um, I believe I can't remember who was who even I had the license at the time but there were some Dungeons and Dragons comics and it's the first time I ever saw the art of Jander Sema and one of the things that really impressed me is that the women had different body types and different proportions and you know it, it was uh, it was kind of a revelation in comics. Like I was like, wow, and, and I, it's one of the reasons I really love Jan as an artist uh, to this day is because she really does vary not only you know the men's bodies but the women's bodies to be more reflective of what actually exists. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed the name of that one. Uh, it was an old Dungeons and Dragons comic, Dungeons, but okay. but I mean uh, Jan How does a lot of dark stuff, Star Wars joints. stuff. So uh -huh. yeah, in uh, well, I, I, my book is called I Kill Giants. He did a book called I Kill Giants, which is. Female, female yeah, it's lead. a graphic novel though, so it's just sort of a one. It's a one-shot story, but uh, she's like in middle school, but it's um, it's a drama really. So, okay. um, and and Ken uh, Namora, who who drew the book, I mean, she's a she's a real teenager, you know. Um, but I was just thinking about if you were interested in superheroes, there are Wonder Woman runs that are really good that were drawn by people who who are very conscious of exactly what we're talking about. So any of the Phil Jimenez stuff. Uh, both yeah, when he yeah. wrote it and his stuff it. with Greg Rucka is all great. I love the all Rucka that stuff. run. You know, like yeah. those guys, they really cared about. Yeah. They're super conscious about the the character and about how women are portrayed in comics. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's there's some really good stuff to be mined there. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. Of what I'm trying. You know, I, well, I'll it tell really, you. I'll it's actually a little bothersome to me that I can't think of more completely female fronted runs. Most of the time, when they do female fronted books, I tend to just kind of go, ah, bummer. They didn't they didn't get it right. You know, well, it, really, because it's it's a hard thing to sell to the, to a what has traditionally been a more male dominated market, mm -hmm. um, and so often they just kind of miss the mark. You know, they've tried to do things with Captain Marvel a million times, and every single time they do, it just yeah. never quite, you know, sits in in the pocket. I mean, that She Hulk run is really great though. Dan yeah. Slott, really really funny female lead, reasonably intelligent, you know, woman trying to. Get her shit together. Yeah, yeah, yeah and again, uh, astonishing. You know, like I said, astonishing X Men in that run. Um, you know, you've got Joss Whedon who writes very strong female oh, characters. Love. Yeah, yeah. And, and Emma there's Frost actually, and, and Kitty you've Pride. Got, you've got Kitty Pride, who's one of the uh, you know Shadow Cat, who's one of the best female characters I think ever in comics. Yeah. She her costume goes from the top of her neck all the way down to her feet. She has no skin exposed whatsoever. And there's a great bit with her and Emma Frost where uh, Emma Frost gives her a problem for being late and Kitty says, "Oh, I'm sorry. I was putting on clothes." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sure. Hi, my name's Dawn. You actually already answered my question. I just didn't want to sit back down. So I figured I'd let you know that my daughter is a huge huge fan of Deadpool. Oh, so, okay. huge fan. Great, well, thanks. And uh, I got to meet you guys at Wizard World with my daughters when you guys were here for that. And that was a lot of fun. Got to learn a lot of stuff. I have the Dead Romeo comic book autographed by you. Thank you. <laughs> Still Thank have you it in my room. Much. Plug. Um, <laughs> but I was actually kind of curious what happened to all those pictures that you guys took for that. Did those not go up on the, those were up on the Facebook page, right? I, uh, I know a lot of them got uploaded. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I wasn't. 
now. You know, we're not the we're most find uh, out. organized people. Hey, I'm volunteering my time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to them. I thought, I assumed that my people put them somewhere. <laughs> you have people. <laughs> yeah, I, fortunately, I do have people. <laughs> and that way, you can just leave it to those people so that it never gets done. We'll have a talk with those people. <laughs> um, I'll try to find them, <laughs> and maybe, maybe I'll post them on uh, somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a good answer. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Hey, Jesse. I just wanted to let you know I have a copy of the Daredevil Deadpool issue, so if you give me your email or Facebook, I will scan it and send it to you later. Wow. <laughs> nice. You are the man. I've been dying to read that book for, like, 15 years. <laughs> Hi, my, name's Tim. my name is Tim. Uh, Hi, Tim. The stuff that I used to have way back when, like original Transformers, back when Marvel was doing that, mm -hmm. some of the old DC Star Trek stuff, uh, particularly like the Modala Imperative, Dead of Honor, Who Killed Captain Kirk, those. How do I actually get my hands on those again? Oh, uh, it's a little hard. Uh, most of that stuff hasn't been reprinted. I mean, and you're really kind of at the mercy, you know, unless they choose to reprint it. You know, it's just kind of out there. But there's the internet. Yeah. So type it in. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, well, that's a situation where, like, you know, eBay, eBay would probably yeah. be a really good bet. I don't know that that stuff's been released digitally. Well, actually, in the case of the Transformers, I know that IDW repackaged all of that into trades. So all of the Marvel stuff they repackaged into trade paperbacks. So, uh, you know, hit up, hit up Amazon. And, do they uh, do that with G.I. Joe, too? Yeah, they did that with G.I. Joe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because once those, th you know, once those licenses change, you know, Marvel produces the book in the 80s, but the comics belong to Hasbro, so it goes to Hasbro's archives. They sign with IDW, and then IDW can then reprint all of that. So, uh, and they have. So I don't know how hard those collections are to get. I know I have the G.I. Joes uh, personally, but um, yeah, I'm sure they're out there on Amazon. Cool. And, well, and then, you know, sometimes, out. even though... So not all comic shops are equal. Uh, you can go into a comic book store and find out what they have on the back list. They have this gigantic thing of previews. They have a massive list of all the various companies that have stuff that are still in print that they would not carry in the store, but they might order for you. So that's you know another way to kind of track track down stuff. If you can't find it directly mm -hmm. online, it's another. No, I recommend doing that first because I always recommend uh, shopping with mom and pops over you know big corporate chains. Um, but if you can't find it, then obviously yeah, yeah. the internet's your best bet. Cool. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Um, so when I was first originally introduced to comics, it was mostly about the artwork and like just watch like seeing panels on panels of just facial expressions and being able to tell the whole story through just the artwork itself. Mm -hmm. And recently I've been trying to find a really good series that has been mostly artwork based, minimal words, just like m a huge focus on the art piece. And I've been struggling to find a really like just something that when you look at it, you know what's happening and like it's just, it speaks to you, I guess. It's does that make sense? I kind of get that vibe from Beast of Burden, uh, which is uh, drawn by Jill Thompson. I mean, beautiful watercolors. It's all dogs, you know, yeah. this little <laughs> group of dogs, and they come chat and stuff like that. Um, and uh, who, who writes that with her? Uh, Evan Dorkin. Evan, Evan Dorkin. Mm -hmm. um, I only know because they beat us for an Eisner. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've only read, like, one of, the, one of the books, but I remember it being relatively brisk and beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a no, really very good book. storytelling and, and, and beautiful art. Also, I don't, know if Dark, I don't know if Dark Horse really still one. has it in print, but uh, Ricardo Delgado did a book called Age of Reptiles. Dark yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that one too. Yeah, uh, Age of Reptiles is gorgeous. Um, it's, it's a dinosaur story, and he's done a couple of sequels since then. Uh, the first one, I think, is called The Hunt, which was my favorite, mm -hmm. um, and that has no words whatsoever. It's all told through the art, and it is amazing. Oh, you know what's really gorgeous? Shaolin Cowboy. You will see things in that book that you, uh, well, oh my goodness, what is this that he has drawn? <laughs> it's insane. And it's like super open and, you know, he, he's very into empty space and like really, really, he's, he's so prolific, Jeff Darrow. Yeah. <sighs> I, I'm also a big fan of uh, one of my um, artists on a book that I work on. His name is Ma Max Fiumara. He's doing a lot of work right now at Dark Horse. Um, and he works on, um, uh, on the Hellboy series and Abe Sapien and all that kind of stuff. He's a, he's a fantastic storyteller, and the, and the art is always very, very rich. 
So if you if you can find somebody like that that you can zero in on, you know, you'll never be disappointed, even if they're those words and those writers clutter up the art. You know? Astonishing X Men is brisk and really beautiful as well. I yeah. Like okay, so we're we're down to a few minutes. We got to go lightning oh, round. We've only got a few minutes. Thank you. Lightning Sorry, round. Thank you. Sorry. All right, lightning round questions. The return of Doug, of Gogglehead. Okay. So. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, so um, I love. Are Mon you here for another water? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesse, no jokes. This is the lightning round. No, no jokes. Lightning okay. round. Okay. So, uh, for, okay, I, I love manga style comics because I think America needs to have more manga and screw Japan because they won't freaking send them over here on time. I hate it. Um, anyway. <laughs> That's a good way to get them. <laughs> <laughs> I, Japan, is, Japan is all about okay, making no, no, no. What's you your, happy, what's your Okay. So, um, by any chance, could you recommend me any, like, type of, like, any type of steampunk type of maybe comic like something that's like gives the same vibe of a show like of a show like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood where like the ending doesn't suck because okay. in the original show the ending sucked so they remade it and then the ending didn't suck but it, it was kind of steampunky like a sure so sure and the Lady Mechanica is steampunk I haven't read it so I don't know um, you know I, I, I can't speak to that but um, it's it's a steampunk book and it's got gorgeous art. I can yeah, that. I think you should really you know type in steampunk comic books and look it up. Just because I was necessarily never drawn to steampunk. The only reason why I read Joe's book steampunk was because it was written by Joe and I like <laughs> him, so I read that book. Yeah. Okay, and and right. lastly, um, there are a lot of female leads in manga type things. The only, I was actually thinking that the only there was tons of really strong female leads in manga. The only difference is that they don't really make the effort to not, how do I put this in? There's a lot of fan service, it's oh. called. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that. Yeah, they don't make an effort to not put that yeah. out there. Yeah, it's right. a little sexy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, who do we, who do we got over here? I right, good. Okay, um, uh, the, this might be a little bit weird, but um, how do you feel about the Deadpool video game? <laughs> the funniest thing for me about the Deadpool video game is that it came out the same weekend that we had the Deadpool Spider-Man episode on Ultimate Spider-Man. And I was just terrified that some kid watched Deadpool on cartoon on, on Disney XD and then said, Mom, I want that video game. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a little it's a little raunchy. I, I've played like the begin uh, maybe the first couple levels and uh, I mean it's funny. For me, I have a problem with the multiple voices in Deadpool's head. Um, that's a plot device that I think got overused and in the game it's it's really heavy and it kinda gets heavy handed and I think it kinda bogs down the the game itself and the story, but um, but I mean, you know, if you like Deadpool and, and that's that's your thing, he's he's fun to run around and beat people up with. So, <laughs> I haven't played it yet. Yeah, I haven't played it yet. Um, so we got to wrap up, um, and I just want to apologize because I have to catch a flight. Like I'm gonna have to run out of here, but I'm gonna be here for like five minutes. And if anybody has any questions or you know wants to ask me anything before I have to go, I'm happy to uh, to be here for you guys. Thanks so much, especially all you guys. Thank you all for coming. For all my other panels, and uh, thanks for hanging with me. And, uh, Bearing with my voice. <laughs> thank you very much, and guys. Joe, thank you so much for coming. And, By the way, and Portland rules. Out. And Aaron, thanks for moderating. And thank you to our whole staff shooting all these, all these panels and everything. It's been a pleasure working with all you guys. Thanks. <laughs>